A few weeks ago, I talked about this transformer for use in computers that require 220 volts in the US. It's been working great, but some of you pointed out that the plugs are less than ideal. And you were right. So today we're going to see what the problem is with this kind of plug, and we're going to replace it with something much safer. This kind of socket is supposed to be universal. That means you can insert in it an electrical plug from just about anywhere in the world and it will work. And that's true. I can plug in a US plug, a European plug, a British plug, and I'm sure it takes many more variations. That sounds great, right? So why don't we adopt this format all over the world and make everything compatible? One problem is that it removes the reminder of the plug shape from the expected voltage. So it would lead to more over voltages by plugging in things with the wrong voltage. But here it doesn't matter because this particular machine is all about converting a voltage to what I want. So no, there are two much bigger problems than that. The goal of an electrical plug and socket is to deliver current from an electrical circuit. But in addition to that, most plug and socket systems around the world are also designed so they're safe to handle and operate. And I'm saying most of them because the US system in particular is the worst of that, but we'll see more of that later. That design, like most good designs, is often fairly transparent, and people using it every day don't even notice it or think about it. And that is where the universal plug completely fails. It's so generic that the only thing it does is deliver electricity, but completely bypasses all safety design features for most systems. Let's talk about the European plug system, since that's the one I'm mostly going to be using. Have you noticed how modern European sockets are recessed? That serves two purposes. One of them is that it holds the plug in place a little bit more securely, but the most important reason is that it makes it impossible to touch the prongs when they're partly inserted because all of that is inside the cavity. So guess what? Neither of those two things hold true with the universal socket in the transformer. As you can see, I can insert the plug and both leads are making contact with the circuit inside and they're fully exposed. So if anything conductive falls in there, like my finger, it would make a short circuit and blow things up, although it probably wouldn't blow up the computer connected to it, fortunately, since that's just the transformer. To make things worse, because the socket isn't recessed, the plug is just dangling there, so I can pop it out completely or partly very easily. That makes it even more likely for something to short things accidentally, or even to bump those and lose whatever you were doing in the computer at the time. Of course, it's kind of funny that I'm complaining about this because the US outlets have all those problems by default. I'm not going to get to that in detail right now, but I'll refer to you to a great Technology Connections video about that. But wait, I'm not done with the problems with this outlet. There's more. One of the safety issues that modern electrical plugs offer is an earth connection. Earth connections offer an emergency exit for the current in case a catastrophic short circuit happens. Imagine you have some kind of electrical device like a toaster, and something goes really wrong, and while the device is off, the hot lead, meaning the one carrying the current, is shorted with the machine itself. Because the machine is not on, the circuit itself is not closed, so there's no current draw to trigger any fuses or safety measures. Instead, the full machine is now at high potential, which is potentially even higher than 220 volts or 120 volts, and it will discharge as soon as somebody touches it. It sounds very unpleasant and potentially deadly. The earth connection prevents that from happening. The earth wire connects the machine itself, all the parts that are conductive but aren't carrying any electricity, to earth, meaning the biggest conductive body around, which is probably a rod dug outside your soil outside of your house. If the hot lead ever comes into contact with the machine itself, electricity will start flowing from the hot lead to the earth lead into the ground outside, which will instantly trigger any fuses because it probably exceeded the maximum current capacity. And with that, it saved your life by drawing your attention to the toaster instead of zapping you next time you used it. So even though earth connections were not normal everywhere 50 years ago, I think we can all agree that they're actually a good thing. Okay, so back to the socket. I'm sure that with all those holes in there, some of them are for an earth connection, right? Well. Maybe. I'll open it up in a minute and look at it. But have a look at the European plug again. Two leads and where is the earth connection? For good or bad, when it came time to extend the plug design to include an earth connection, instead of adding a third prong, which would have made it incompatible with any existing sockets, they decided to add these two tabs around it. If you look at the modern socket, you'll see two bits of metal on the sides that connect with those tabs in the plug and create an earth connection but it also allows you to connect this to an all socket type without an earth connection and it will work. Honestly, I don't think that was the best design decision because the same thing could have been accomplished with the help of a trivial adapter, but I guess they did this to save people from having to buy those. So that's what we have right now. And now you start seeing the problem here. Since there's no recessed outlet in the universal plug, we have no metal earth connections at all. 
So not only is the plug potentially unsafe because it exposes the leads, but it also has no earth connection at all. Yikes! To be fair, this kind of universal socket should have normal earth connection for plugs with an actual earth prong. So for example, both a US and a UK plug would be correctly protected using the socket. The UK plug is actually really well designed. It took me some time to fully develop my appreciation for it, but a lot of thought has gone into making it safe, especially the plug part rather than the socket. That means that most of the safety features are built into the plug, so they work correctly even with this universal plug. So apart from having an earth prong, the UK plug gets around the partly inserted problem by having half the prongs insulated. So by the time they start making contact with the circuit inside the socket, you can't physically touch the prongs with anything. Unfortunately, that's not the case with the UK plug that I have here from the BBC Micro. I'm guessing it's because this is an old plug and maybe the installation around the prongs is something that happened since then. They've even gone as far as to add a fuse to every plug, even though it makes things slightly more expensive, it's actually not a bad idea at all. Anyway, so today I want to fix that and install these European sockets. I'm hoping that it's a pretty straightforward fix, but it will also give us a chance to peek inside the transformer and see what's in there. And yes, I know I'm losing the ability to connect other plug shapes in here, like the UK one, but that's not a big deal. All the plugs that I wanted to connect were European ones, minus the BBC Micro one, and for that, I have another solution that we'll talk about towards the end. All right, so the first thing is to open up the case. This one is made out of pretty sturdy metal and held by many screws. And I'm not kidding, that's a lot of screws. They may have gone a little bit overboard with that. But I can use this time to thank all the channel supporters on Patreon and YouTube. The channel recently went over 40,000 subscribers, which is great, but the direct channel supporters are the ones that make it really special, and another here month after month, allowing all of this to happen, so thank you very much. Anyway, back to the case, we're done with all the screws and, oh wow, the inside isn't exactly how I pictured it. We already talked last time how transformers are mostly two coils, but seeing this massive coil and nothing else? really drives the point home. The cables look to be in appropriate gauge for the load they could be carrying, they're pretty thick, so that's good. The thing I like the least is how some of these sockets and switches are held together with silicon or hot glue or something like that. Oh well. Before we do anything else, let's answer the question we had earlier about whether the transformer is properly grounded. If so, we should have continuity between the earth terminals of the two sockets here in the front. And yeah, that looks good and with the earth terminal in the input plug. And yeah, that too. And to be actually useful, the earth terminal should be connected to the case itself. And yes, we have continuity between the earth terminal and the screws, so it's all good. And now it's time to take the two universal sockets off. I have to admit, this is one mess of wires. I wish they could have at least used different colors to better understand what's connected together. Everything red just makes it much harder to follow the connection, so I better take a picture so I can put everything back together later. Desoldering the cables is pretty tricky. I need to reach all the way in to the connecting tab of the socket, and I need to be careful not to touch any cable along the way. Also, these thick cables are sucking the heat away really quickly from the soldering iron, so I'm having to crank up the temperature quite a bit. But little by little, I'm able to remove them, so it's all good. Now that I've removed the cables in one of the sockets, I need to pop off the socket itself. It has some tabs that need to be pushed in at the same time, and that's harder to do than it sounds. Too bad these were the sockets that were securely attached and not the ones held with silicon. All right, now that it's out, let's see if the replacement socket fits in. And yeah, it looks like it won't fit. Bummer. I was hoping it would be a drop-in replacement, but I guess sockets are just not a standard size. Since the case is sheet metal, I think the best way to enlarge the opening is going to be with a Dremel and a reinforced cutting disc. I haven't done this before with metal, so here goes nothing. And yes, I am wearing eye protection, and I'm holding the Dremel with both hands to avoid any problems. Oh wow, I was not expecting those sparks flying, but I guess it's working, so let's keep going. I didn't measure anything, so I'm just eyeballing how much bigger it has to be. And after I managed to cut a strip, yeah, that's still not big enough. And it may not even be wide enough either, so I may have to enlarge the other way too.
Okay, the height seems better now. So let's cut the side a bit as well. Yeah, that's looking better. And when I push the new socket into place, ah, it clicks in in a very satisfying way. I haven't even screwed the other half and this is looking really solid already. And now, same thing with the other socket. I think I'm getting the hang of using the Dremel in the middle now, so this goes much more smoothly. All right, I think that's good enough. I wanted to take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay manufactures printed circuit boards at a very fast turnaround rate, which makes it ideal for prototype boards like this one. I've I haven't done any for this particular video, but I've used them in the past and their quality has been excellent. Their turnaround time can be really fast, including shipping, so it's great for your own projects and being able to iterate quickly on a design and get multiple versions. PCBWay also offers other services like 3D printing, and I've actually used that recently, but I'm saving the results of that for an upcoming video in maybe two or three weeks. If you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely check out their website at pcbway.com. Now comes maybe the trickiest part of the whole project soldering the terminals of the sockets. First of all, good thing I took a picture and a video of how it was when I opened it, because this is a mess of cables and it's hard to put back together. But also the cables are just the right length, so I have to solder them with sockets already inserted and it gets really tricky and it's hard to see what's in there. It's actually so tricky that I was only able to get some footage of the first cable and then I have to remove the camera out of the way and do the rest. But with that out of the way, now it's just a matter of reassembling everything. First, snap the front plate of the sockets and screw it in place. So this feels really nice and robust, which is one of the things that I was concerned about. So let's actually try plugging something in. And just like before, you can't really do it this way because of the 90 degree angle. So just need to put it facing up. That's not a big deal. And oh yeah, that fits. Great, super solid, it's definitely not getting knocked out right now. And we have earth connection, so this is exactly what I wanted. This is great. All right, let's test this. I hope I reconnected everything correctly. Okay, that's, um, that's uh, a good sign. And let's measure the voltages. So I'll put an AC. All right, so this is another safety feature that I didn't even mention before which is that modern switches or modern receptacles, you need to press both prongs in at the same time in order to uh, make contact. And yeah, there you go, 240 volts in there. And I guess here we have 120. So yeah, it looks like all the wiring is good. So let's put it back together and try it with a computer. And now it's time to put the gazillion screws back in the cover. I have to say, it looks great with the new sockets and it looks like it could have come this way from the factory. Let's give it a test. All right, for this particular test, let's do something more interesting than just plugging in the Amstrad. So I'm gonna use both sockets. In one of them, I'm gonna plug in the Commodore 1084S monitor and it's another 90 degree angle. So I will just put it upside down, great. And we're going to be testing that with a Dragon 64. I chose the Dragon 64 because, well, I haven't taken it out in a while. And also because it has a really odd power supply, so it's not easy to replace. Use one of those that you really need to replace the internals if you want to have a different power supply. Okay, with everything plugged in, I'm gonna turn on the transformer. Yeah, I'm hearing it turn on. Monitor. Yep, it seems to turn on. And the Dragon. There we go. So yeah, I would say this mod worked perfectly and I'm really happy how sturdy and safe it is now. So the transformer is looking great, but I still haven't dealt with the problem of UK plugs. For a while I was thinking that maybe I would put a European plug in one socket and a UK plug in the other one, but really all of the computers that I want to use have European plugs, the ones that are going to go in that transformer anyway, all of them except for the BBC Micro. So that seemed a bit of a waste. I could use an adapter for a UK to a European plug, but that would be very inconvenient every time you unplug it, maybe the adapter stays plugged in or things like that. So I want to make something a little bit more permanent. It turns out there's actually enough interesting material on how to adapt a BBC Micro to US voltage, plus other interesting tidbits with video signal and whatnot. So I'm actually going to save all of that for a future video. So 
Until next video, I'll see you then.